Hey everyone, welcome to Brickball. My name is Jack, and today is another LEGO Weekly News update. First things first, I changed the backdrop. Uh, I was tired of the black. Um, I actually made an episode on it, so I will link that in the video description below, just me tearing the cloth off and everything and setting up the uh, backdrop. But the main thing to take note of is uh, we now have a next collection of the week. So for next Thursday, you know, or you can guess as to what collection that is gonna be. And uh, anyways, let's get back to the news. There was uh, some rumors, there's a few extra reveals uh, with sets and things like that. There's one big, massive uh, Lego contest for building that's on Rebrick. And uh, let's just get into it. All right, so this first bit of news comes from Collider magazine, and it's really just a new image that we get based on another article that is about the Batman movie. From this new image, we get an idea of what possibly some of the new Batman vehicles might be in some of the remaining sets that we don't know yet about this upcoming film. The closest one on the right-hand side certainly is the Batmobile, and it's kind of another interpretation or rendition of what the uh, classic Batmobile looks like. And then switching closest to the left, I believe that is some sort of jet and it's probably got folding wings. Now behind that is easily the most unique of the vehicles. That definitely looks like a Batman pirate ship. Please, please, please let this be a set. I don't know when this would appear in the movie, but who knows? It's totally a possibility and uh, now that I've seen it, I really want this thing to be uh, manifested in actual Lego form. Switching on over, it took me a second to figure out what this might be and I think it is indeed a hovercraft, which comes as no surprise for any kind of Batman vehicle. And then we've got two more images way back by his head. I think one is a very, very large ship. Kind of reminds me of one of those old radar ships or maybe a C-130 or something. Definitely looks like it can take a lot of cargo with it. And then on the other side, I'm pretty sure that is just another Bat helicopter or a Bat copter. Anyways, I'm most intrigued with the Bat jet and of course that Batman pirate ship. And who knows, this isn't really any sort of official rumor, we just have images of other Batman vehicles. And moving down the line, I don't usually report on LEGO contests, but this most recent one from uh, Rebrick is probably one of the coolest LEGO competitions I've seen in a while. Maybe that's just because I really like the modular sets, but because it is the 10th anniversary of the modular buildings line from Creator, and we're gonna have one very epic modular assembly square set coming out on January 1st, Rebrick has decided to announce a competition where basically you create an interior, a room, that could possibly go into a modular building, and the winner of the contest will not only receive the assembly square set, but also five other modular sets, the pet shop, Parisian restaurant, detective's office, palace, cinema, and the brick bank. So that is one massive win, and if you manage to get it, then you can pretty much build up an entire city on your own. Lots of people have already submitted some pretty awesome looking designs, and the contest will remain open until November 29th if you want to join. But let's move on to some of the official sets that have been revealed this week. I got this information from Alan Tran at thebrickfan.com, and if you want to learn anything more about the stuff I mentioned in this episode, you can check the links in the video description below. There are two new seasonal Christmas sets coming out, they're both going to be available in November 1st, and this one here is the Elves Workshop, set number 40205. This set consists of two elf characters sitting in chairs and working at their little table workshop. They've got a combination of tools and toys with them, and they seem to be wearing very festive outfits. A nice colorful set, though I know some fans are not quite sold on the actual shape of the figure's bodies. The second set is the Santa Claus one, it is 40206, also going to be available on November 1st, and they're each going to sell for $10. $10. This is the set I think that looks a little nicer. The Santa Claus build is uh, pretty fun. Kind of some funny looking stubby arms, but a great looking build for the head, body, and even like those short stubby legs. Now there's more official pictures of seasonal sets. Uh, this is the ornament that you can get. Actually, we did show pictures of this thing in the past, but we didn't know how you could get it until now. Just like the other two sets, this is gonna be available November 1st, but it's not gonna be available for purchase directly. You're gonna have to make a $50 of purchase or more, and then you'll just get this thing for free. Also, I guess when mentioning qualifying purchases for something exclusive, the Toys R Us exclusive Coal Stone Armor minifig is now available at Toys R Us. He's either eight bucks if you want to buy him individually or you have to spend $25 or more on something Lego. What else is in the news? Uh, Lego did post up a, well, a poster of Doctor Strange for the uh, Doctor Strange movie that's coming out in a few days. 
And it's, uh, yeah, it's Doctor Strange sitting in his Sanctum Sanctorum. Not too much else going on there. But now that I think about it, there's definitely something worth mentioning. There are a couple of sets, some very fan favorite ones that will be retiring soon. And I'm just gonna show a few of them to you really quick. And if you were ever thinking about getting them and sort of put it off, well, you might not have the chance to get them until, well, after they're retired and then their prices are gonna go way, way up. So retiring from the Lego shop is Doctor Who, the Ewok Village set, Ghostbusters Ecto-1, that's the Lego Ideas set. We have the Modular Pet Shop, our massive Sandcrawler Star Wars set, the Sydney Opera House, Big Bang Theory, and Wally. -E. Quite a few idea sets, in fact, are being retired. So anyways, if any of those sets maybe were something that you were thinking about getting, you're not gonna have much time to pick them up until their prices go way, way, way up. And I guess with all of that, it's time to move on to LEGO Ideas. If you don't know what that is, it's a website. You submit a creation in LEGO, and maybe it'll become an official LEGO set if enough people vote on it. No new sets got 10,000 votes this week, though there are a few that are trending and doing quite well. But now I'm just going to pick a set and talk about one that I think looks really cool to me. And this week, we have the set Boathouse Diner. It's a great creative-looking build. There's, uh, you know, the hull of a ship sticking out the side, which definitely makes it very distinctive. It's got a rope ladder that leads up to the little crow's nest there and there's just a lot of sea decorations all around the exterior with the anchor the steering wheel and you can even see a couple of life preservers and a flag and whoa i just saw that the uh, builder robin ann is the same designer that just got their boat repair shop accepted by lego ideas and they're also working on a dive shop set as well i guess this builder really does a lot of uh, sea-based sets but anyways it's just looking really good should go check it out on Lego Ideas, and now it is time to move on to custom creations. These are just some cool things that I happen to see people building throughout the week. This first build is not a set of pictures, but actually there's a couple of guys that made a YouTube video about an RCing flying Lego airplane. It's a great vid. They uh, engineered pieces uh, from an actual RC flying plane on top of a bunch of base plates, and with a bit of clever engineering, they got the thing to fly. Well, at least for a little bit. I suggest you guys watch the whole video. I'll leave a link for it in the description below. And I'm not sure, but these guys might be the very first people to get an almost exclusively Lego parts plane to actually fly in the air. It's a pretty cool vid. This is the Converse Chuck Taylor All-Star by an action figure. I originally learned about this builder from his highly realistic creations of animals, but he's gotten into a couple of photorealistic versions of shoes, and I think he really managed to get the iconic shape and style of the Converse to just look really realistic. From afar, it certainly looks like it could very easily just be a shoe, and normally I'm not a fan of adding the non-Lego parts into a Lego build, but the use of the actual shoelace within the build just gives it that extra bit of realism. This is a great looking display build and it definitely gives me a little bit of nostalgia because I'm pretty sure I had a Converse shoe almost exactly like that. It was red and was a high top, so yeah, pretty much. Alright, in this next build, I didn't actually uh, know it was based on Lord of the Rings until I saw the title. I was just appreciating the nature build to it, but this is called Tom Bombadil's House by Lego Strader. Tom Bombadil was a character in Lord of the Rings, specifically Fellowship, and I don't really want to get into the ridiculousness of this character, but I can just say that I'm glad that they cut him from the film version. Either way, I was paying attention to this build because of the actual nature aspect to it. I mean, let's check out the hay roof. It's made almost exclusively of those upturned tile pieces, or possibly jumper pieces, and on the inside of them are inlaid with just a ton of minifigure hands. Never seen that before, not even something remotely close to that, but it definitely gives the effect like, yes, the roof is made of hay, or straw. And then when you look even closer down to the ground, he's got those flat sort of branch pieces on top of the already green plates, and it gives a ton more sort of depth and dimension to the tall grass, or possibly moss, I'm not even sure. Either way, things just look a lot more organic here. And there's another great little touch with the transparent stud pieces kind of resting both on the roof and the grass, and considering sort of the warmth of the light, it almost seems like an early morning dew. Great sort of scene setting here all around. There's a few other details I could go into, but anyways, just a wonderful little nature setup. Okay, that is it for this episode. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. Remember to tune in same time next week for another LEGO Weekly News update. And if you enjoy our content, you can always like, subscribe, do what you want to do. We do have another collection video coming out Thursday. We try to keep it on every Thursday. And uh, right, so that's it. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time at Brickfall.